When transactions involving inventory occur, we need to know two methods for recording that inventory. So to demonstrate, let's look at an example. Let's say a business had the following inventory card. There's a lot going on there, but let's just take our attention to the last row. So after May the 4th, this inventory card sets. We've got five units at $300, so that's a total of $1,500. And we've got 10 units at $280 which is 2800 Now remember, these are all the same inventory. We don't know what it is. Uh, it could be an iPhone, could be a car, um, could be fruit and vegetables, we don't know. But the point is, they all kind of look the same. Like, you know, it's very hard to distinguish each one. So a customer comes in and we sell six today. Which six do we sell? Well, there's many answers to this and we just need to know two of those answers. So we could say, you know, we just look at it and go, well, literally, which six did the customer pick up? Maybe the customer picked up those two from here and those four there. And if we did that, we'd say, well, there's two units at 300. That's from this pile, so that's 600. And then from the $280 pile, we had four units at 280, 1120. So the total value of that inventory is $1,720. Or maybe the customer came in and grabbed those five and that one. Now, if we did that, we'd have five times 300 equals 1,500. One times 280 equals 280, and the total would be 1,780. So the previous total was 1,720. This is 7880, not a big difference, but remember this is just one transaction. Uh, what, you know, we've got hundreds of thousands of transactions. The differences are gonna be very important. So it's very important that we decide that we have a method for valuing this because which figure is correct? Well, there's no answer to that. In fact, maybe a totally different figure is correct. So what we need to do is when we, we need a system for valuing inventory when certain transactions occur. And those two systems are gonna be either the identified cost method or the first in first out method and we'll call that FIFO and what we're going to do for the rest of this chapter is fill in this table we've got to say well when, when these things happen what do we do so when we sell inventory what do we do with identified cost and what do we do with FIFO when returns come back either a sales return or a purchase return what do these rules say when there's an inventory gain or an inventory loss what do we do when the owner takes out inventory as drawings we need a rule and when inventory is used for advertising, we need a rule. So the rest of this chapter is going to be going through each of these systems one by one and going through each of these different types of transactions.